My guest is comedian, actor, writer, director, cartoonist, and musician, Dimitri Martin. I'm probably leaving something out. Uh, no, those that's probably more than enough, actually. <laughs> Dimitri, mm. thanks for taking the time. How was your summer? Pretty good. Not bad. Um, thanks for having me, by the way. I appreciate it. Were you working the whole time, or did you have any time to relax? Um, did a little relaxing. Um, I got a couple young kids, so I'd say relax is a relative term. <sighs> And my wife and I never really relax anymore. But uh, but yeah, as summers go, I think it was a pretty relaxing one. Well, summer's coming to an end. First day of fall, just a couple of weeks away. Speaking of your young kids, do they love Halloween as much as you? Because I think at one point I heard you say Halloween is your favorite holiday. Yes. Yeah, I think probably probably because of my wife. She's really into Halloween and my kids are all into it. My son's into manga now, so I have a feeling. I don't know what that means. It's like the Japanese um, anime. Oh, stuff. Yeah. maybe gotcha. I'm saying it wrong. manga, manga. I don't know. <laughs> and you said at one point Halloween different than other holidays because it's not really a family holiday. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the only one you don't have to you don't have to spend that holiday with your family, just <laughs> your relatives. So when we were setting up our chat, your people told me you're working uh, you're you're working hard on a new Netflix special, doing the editing. How's that coming? When can we look forward to that? Yeah, I'm just about done. I think I'm a couple more days of editing and then I'll I'll be like doing the sound mix and I can hand it in. I think I don't have a date yet, but I'm hoping November it'll be on Netflix. And I'm excited about this one because I'm doing something different. I'm doing a trilogy. So I'm going to do three stand up specials, three different hours that link to each other narratively. So the one that comes out this fall will be part one of the trilogy. Ah, Interesting. Yeah, and then different. part two probably in the spring or summer. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to shoot part two in the spring and I hope I can get that out by the summer. And then part three, maybe the following winter or something. So my understanding with, with comedy specials, it, it's generally shot over several nights and then you find the best parts and put it all together. Is that how this one works? Yeah. Usually you do like two shows in one night. You're in the same room, you know, same venue, obviously, and you wear the same outfit and everything. You just change the audience. So you get like a couple shots at each joke. But your editing must be tough because your shows are not the same show to show to show. This was, yeah, it is tricky. And this one I shot some more. I did a, a, a couple extra shows just to have more options, but that's good. But it was also harder in the edit because there was like kind of more to choose from. Um, but I did a lot of stuff in the edit. It's definitely weird. This one's different than anything I've done. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's similar. I have my jokes and some drawings yeah. and stuff, but. I'm trying to do stuff in post-production that, that makes it a little bit different than the usual special. Well, for folks that don't realize it, Dimitri's in Portland September 23rd at Revolution Hall. A second show's just been added due to popular demand. That's got to feel good. Yeah, yeah. And that's I've been to that venue before, so I always love coming to Portland. And I'm, I'm grateful for the people I get at my shows. Uh, Portland's one of my favorite cities. Plus, I like Powell's books. I mean, there's obvious reasons that Portland's just a great place to be. <laughs> You would so, fit right in here in Portland. You're quirky enough like, to be one of us. I feel like, I mean, when I've been there, I felt I feel comfortable for sure in Portland um, as a visitor. So I appreciate that. I don't know if everybody realizes this, but your pre-comedy resume is rather impressive. And I'll just recap for those that don't know. You got your <laughs> undergraduate degree at Yale. You were admitted to Harvard, but decided to attend NYU School of Law on a full law scholarship. I'm sure your mom and dad were thrilled when you told them you weren't going into law and you're going to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah, you know it. I that was my. I had a real good quarter life crisis there. I I, I did a whole thing. Um, That's yeah, a big jump. It is. Yeah, it's funny to me because I feel like the joke was on me when I look back. I think, you know, I did everything I was supposed to do in school and did my my activities. I was well rounded as far as I could tell. Did everything that I thought you're supposed to do. If someone had just told me, you know, you're gonna tell fart jokes for a living, I would have said thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're telling me now so I don't go do all this stuff that's really not necessary. But it took, you know, I found out later, like, oh, I'm not going to do this law thing. I think it's going to be jokes. Um, you know, no regrets, I guess. I, I did have a good time in school and I feel lucky that I got to go to the places I went to. But was um, there a particular type of law that you had planned to focus on? I thought I was going to do public interest law. That's what the scholarship was for. So that's a pretty broad category, but I thought maybe something with juvenile rights or, or okay. community development stuff. I I thought 
briefly like, oh, public defender kind of thing. And then I realized I don't know how much of a litigator I could be. Like I'm not, I don't know. I think I'm kind of conflict diverse ultimately. So yeah. the, it was a miss. The whole thing was like not going to be a fit for me, but I wasn't looking to do corporate law or work in some big firm that I knew. I, I, was, I thought I'd do something that I thought would be helpful to people, but. You're going to be one of the good attorneys. I thought, right. So <laughs> in my you... idealistic naivete. How do you feel your comedy has evolved over the years? How do you think you have grown as a comedian? What has changed? Well, I did start with just one liner. So I started with jokes and I do find myself often returning to just the love of short jokes and trying to, to use language economically to get comedic ideas out there. I think I've developed a little more visually over the years. I'm getting a little bit better as a visual artist. Um, and I'm a little more comfortable being more personal and, and talking about things that are maybe a little more based in my emotions. Um, in my normal offstage life, I think I'm a, a pretty emotionally centered person, I guess. I'm not like um, walking around just saying random one-liners to people. You know, I feel like I'm a pretty connectable person. But I've always just like comedically not been drawn to telling long stories on stage. I, I like some of my favorite comics are great at that. Stephen Wright, um, I know, is one of your... Yeah, for as a joke, right? Probably my all-time favorite, and he was the opposite, which which I what I loved about him, and I still do, which is it was just these discreet ideas and not even any segues. You know, I just love that. Yeah. But um, you know, thinking about like someone like Richard Pryor, who's one of the all-time greats, is obviously a very different comic than than me or what I could be. But as I've gotten older, I've, I've been able to appreciate just how how good that is to be able to do that. Um, but in the era of podcasts and like oversharing and so much autobiographical comedy, I still I still like jokes for what they are. In this current political climate that we find ourselves in in this country, do you find it difficult to stay away from politics? How do you handle that? If I could think of funny stuff about politics, I'd probably do it, but sort of whatever the powers that be are yeah. they, they sort of decided that like look you're gonna you're gonna come up your best stuff will probably be about like hammocks and dogs and stuff like that i'm like <laughs> that's cool if that's what i have to offer um privately personally yeah i feel like i'm probably as mad as everybody else and yeah. um i'm trying to always meter my my news and politics diet because it's same here yeah it's tough right it's it's really hard especially in the age of misinformation and you know, you don't even know what's being done to your brain and how you're being manipulated by whatever platform. So I'm like, it's like a constant struggle. I think. Before I let you go, Dimitri, I think most people, I certainly am concerned about artificial intelligence taking over my job. I guess as a stand-up comedian, that's something you don't really have to worry about. Uh, I wonder, I mean, maybe not yet, but um, yeah, I've, I've, I've read quite a bit about that stuff and it, I'm it's scary. Surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised at how quickly it's accelerating. Like just a couple of years ago, it seemed like it was a little further off. And it feels yeah. like sort of here we are now, you know, it's weird. Yeah, they unleashed chat GPT to the world. And it's just, I mean, I'm just amazed what it can do and what it has a potential to do. Frightening. And on that note. Yes. <laughs> so Dimitri, thanks so much for taking the time. Did you give me a date for the Netflix special? No, I don't. I'm waiting on it myself, but I think it's going to be in November. Okay, excellent. We will see you September 23rd at Revolution Hall. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Dimitri. Take care. Thanks for having me.